To continue with our CPU, we need to know about the JK flip-flop. Let's start here. If you've been following the series, you should recognize this truth table. If not, maybe the S and the R will give you a hint. It's an SR latch. Now, remember that when both the set and reset pins are high, the output goes into this undefined state. The JK flip-flop solves this problem. Now, this IC is a master-slave JK flip-flop. Looking over the data sheet, we can see the name of the IC, the pinout, and most importantly, the truth table. Now, a JK flip-flop is equal to an SR latch in every single one of these ways, except at the bottom of the truth table where both inputs are high. Now, when both inputs are high, the output is toggled. This means if the output was high, then it goes low, aka Q becomes Q complement, and vice versa. We can test this by building the circuit. When we tie J and K high, we can see the LEDs toggle every single clock pulse. Now let's draw a graph of what's going on in respect to time to help us kind of understand what's going on a little bit better. Let's first model our clock pulse. Now I can't draw perfectly, but what we have is a square wave with a 50% duty cycle. Now let's model the Q LED. Here again we have a square wave and also a 50% duty cycle. However, as you can tell, these waves aren't the same. If a half period has a length of x in seconds, then the length of the half period for the Q output is 2x. Another way of saying that is Q is also a clock, but its speed is one half of the original clock. Now those who know a little bit more about waves will know that I mean frequency when I say speed. So the frequency of Q is half of the frequency of the clock pulse. So if we daisy chain these JK flip flops together, we could keep reducing the clock by a factor of 2 to the n, where n is the number of flip flops. So we have the clock come into the first one and its output is Q. The signal that came in has a frequency of x hertz. Q will have a frequency of x divided by 2 hertz. Now, if we put a second one where Q goes into the clock input of the second flip-flop, then the output of that will be even slower. Its frequency will be x divided by 4 hertz. We could do this forever and ever, but I think that's enough for this video. In the next one, we'll talk about an interesting effect of daisy chaining these flip-flops together. So please like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to see more like this. My name's Akil Mohudin, and I will catch you guys later.